Ancient maritime inscriptions, providing important insights into early Dutch sailing heritage, have been discovered on the coast of Madagascar by Flinders University researchers. More than 40 messages were found etched into tall boulders near Antongil Bay in early April. Flinders maritime archaeologist Dr Wendy van Divingboord says the inscriptions offer vital clues to early Dutch sailing history. The Portuguese had had a monopoly in Southeast Asia or in Asia and the trade therewith for about a hundred years and due to socio-economic problems in Europe um, the Dutch and the Portuguese were not at a good foot and so the trade coming out of Asia and all the nice exotica and spices that came from there were not accessible to the Dutch anymore um, around the 1590s and they were desperate to get those commodities and so they tried to find the route to Asia um, on their own. When they made their first voyage in 1595 they had a stopover on the northeast coast of Madagascar um, in the Bay of Antungil. They didn't have an organization in the sense of a paper trail or a bureaucracy and of course it was hard for ships to convey messages. So what they did, particularly in this bay, and this is one of the earliest examples of an open-air post office, if you want to call it like that. So they would chisel messages in stone with departure and arrival dates or, and the names of ships and who their captains were or their chief merchants in the hope that if they would get lost after this last stop or anchor a place where they had anchored, that another Dutch ship that would come at a later stage that could be a year, two years, three years later, would record this message and would take that home. The Dutch inscriptions, known as postal stones, were first documented in the 1920s. But until now, researchers have always believed there were only a dozen of them. No real archaeological assessment had ever been done on them, which is interesting because they're mentioned in the Lonely Planet. So they're well known in touristic or the public sphere, but not much research had ever been done on them. And we expected a dozen when we went there um, and we were very pleased to find almost 40, a little bit over 40. Dutch sailors would know if they would see an inscription to look underneath to find, to see if there was a package of lead um, and then usually they would find letters in there wrapped in canvas and tarred um, to keep the rain and insects out. Dr. Van Divingboord now hopes to return to Madagascar next year to create a 3D film and lobby relevant authorities for better protection of the historic sites. They're in an environment that's um, very wet. It rains almost 290 days a year um, in this area. There's a lot of jungle vegetation. It's very lush and green. But because with that rainfall, that of course impacts those inscriptions and they, there's a lot of erosion there. When, the, when there's high tide, the sea crashes into them, um, at least the ones that the sea face. So the water um, is a problem for their preservation. We're hoping that with the research that, we'll ha that we have done and hope to continue in the future as well, is that we can develop up um, some more comprehensive guide lines or um, little guides for the tourist guides that work in this area and maybe get some more interpretation and maybe build up this area a little bit in cooperation with the National Park in Madagascar and Dutch authorities for um, the protection of cultural heritage abroad um, to build this better in within the tourism sphere and get them protected at a different level because they are very unique.